and uh, evolution of the mind, the way the mind works. And it always comes with a call to, to, to advance or contribute to humanity. It, it moves from, you know, you have an awakening and it's about yourself and you're like, I don't like this job. I don't like the person I'm with. I don't like living here. You know, I don't like my habits. And so they recalibrate. And then it's we, which is like the family or if they're a business owner, everyone in the business starts to, you know, they change their business behavior. Um, and then, but then there's a point where you're not done. So the next step is everyone. I love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You Podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Expert in You podcast. I'm your host, Dan Card. And I am super excited to have you back with me again this week as I interview an amazing guest, Justin. Justin is the co-founder of Massive Change, and it's an advisory firm that's dedicated to supporting business leaders who are called to use their status and brand to take on systematic change. And Justin is very mission driven, and I just can't wait for you to hear from him. Now, he also serves as a fractional CMO, a chief marketing officer, and as a fractional CMO coach. So he works, I assume you work with teams and, and uh, other people that are in organizations to help them in the marketing side of things. And along that journey, uh, it began on a cattle ranch in Eastern Oregon, and Justin's now living in Austin, Texas. So Justin, thank you so much. Welcome to my show. Thank you, Anne. Thanks for having me on. I am so excited. Wow. Why don't you just tell everyone a little bit more about you that's a little bit beyond your bio, a, more of your story so they can get to know you on a more personal level, and then share exactly what you do and what you're super passionate about in the marketplace. Okay. Thank you for that. I I, I tend to be an oversharer, so we'll see how this goes. Also, I'm 53 now, so an answering the question, what's your story, is the long, getting longer. You know how, like, when you have to select the date on a form and it spins and spins you. and spins. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's when I, you I, know I, that is it. That's right. Yeah. yeah, as long as I know how to do it and I can remember the year I was born, I guess I'm okay. But no, I uh, I like to answer this question really with around things that shaped me. Um, and one of them you already mentioned. I grew up on a cattle ranch. I grew up in around um, you know, livestock and entrepreneurism and cowboys, you know, so I got cow cowboys are in my, and I got cowboy blood and it's, it's very important to me, my rural background. Um, rural people are often misunderstood by people that live in big cities. Um, so that shaped me and that was a positive, the two negative shapings. And these were kind of overlapping as I grew up in a very a violent, unstable home um, and suffered many years of trauma. Um, so I have dealt with over the years, uh, as uh, especially just working on this the last 10 years, I've dealt with, um, you know, complex PTSD and uh, various anxiety issues and stuff. But I am very vocal about it, especially as a, as a Gen X man, is that we got to talk about this stuff. We have to talk about mm -hmm. it. And then the, then I was also raised in a fundamentalist Christian cult. Uh, thankfully, my family that had the ranch was not involved in that. So there was this kind of weird split life between um, that and the and the ranch. And, um, you know, I, I didn't know I was going to have this career doing brand strategy. It kind of came to me out of the blue when, uh, when I was about 32, about, so about 20 years ago. Um, I got to meet Andy Roddick once and the, the tennis player 
Um, and I asked him, when did you know you were going to be a tennis player? And he said, when my dad put the racket in my hand when I was four. So my hand in the racket moment was, was in, uh, was like I said, when I, about, about 20 years ago. Um, and then I didn't know that I was going to have a series of awakenings that really just completely recalibrated my life, um, in, including now where I'm at with what we're doing at Massive. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, you you kind of pretty much nailed what what we do. Um, I'll give you I'll just give a different little different take on it. Is so Massive is as far as I know the first of its kind as a as a as a firm as an advisory firm because. We have a very specific audience, which is business leaders uh, that have had some sort of calling or awareness, what we call social consciousness, to use their status and their brand to to change things. Um, and this matches something that we preach all the time, which is social pressure and market pressure are the same thing now, um, especially with millennials and Zoomers. And so my role mostly is in developing what i call an ethos which is my term for a conscious brand or a high conscious brand so that's a brand mm -hmm. that is open-hearted intuitive kind um community involved like truly different so they're not a client but a model that we love is patagonia um that that kind of matches the kind of clients we work with at least in their essence um and we we do we do many other things for them, but all it's all about equipping them to actually lead change in the world. Um, in some, whether that could be a big global issue like climate change, or maybe they're trying to transform their industry. We have a, a client that is trying to um, root out systemic racism within the uh, home lending business. So very. What a great, what a great mission. And I love how you have really built your business around this. And I always say our, so often our business finds us. I believe if you really listen and you really lean into your gifts and your strengths and, and your calling, um, you will see the opportunity within that. So I love how you have been able to just encompass all of that and pull all of that together. I think that makes it for such a powerful business and also for, again, massive change, right? Yeah. To be able to help us. Yeah. Go ahead. You were going to say my, something. Yeah, my partner, um, and my both my wife and my business partner, Virginia Lacayo, is from Nicaragua. And so I'm learning Spanish. And there's a word that encompasses what you said, and um, it's called consequente. And it doesn't really translate to English directly. But consequente in Latin American or Spanish speaking cultures means that your your basically your your intentions, your your intentions, your behaviors, and your talents or skills are all aligned. Um, so we may mm -hmm. call that integrity here. It would be maybe the closest word. Um, or nobility. Um, but that is my that has been my goal for many years. And I feel like now that I, I get to do that. I feel very integrated, you know, that that life is, it, you know, it's no longer work is work and home is home and soul is soul. It's like it's all together now. So good. So good. Yeah. I I really believe, you know, building many, many businesses they all started really out of passion and and wanting to make a difference and wanting to help and then from there i was able to actually build something around that and it sounds like that's exactly you know what you have done it came really came to you and like you said you kind of had that moment where you just knew this is what you should be doing i love that you're helping other people do this too so so often as people build careers as they build businesses, as they do all of these things in their life and their job and their work, whatever that is, they have all of this expertise and this experience, but a lot of times they also have this emptiness that goes along with that. Yeah. And it sounds like you're starting to pull that out of people and yes. really help them capture uh, their purpose. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um... It's very well said by you. We have a, an experience called Moonshot. It's a three-day private experience with Virginia and I um, in Austin. Uh, people come here and we take you through a very intensive process of 
uncovering, articulating, and organizing your life around your purpose. Um, I view your purpose is your brand, like your personal brand. And then if you know, if you own a company, a bigger company, it's, it's also embedded in that. So your purpose is your, is your brand. And so we have like a recent client that did a moonshot with us as a CEO of a company, but has had and the idea, an idea about health healing divides between us in the United States since mm-hmm. he was, uh, um, and, and since he was in Harvard at Harvard university 30 years ago, and he's finally at a place in his life where he's like, and it's not like he's basically found this gap between he's making an impact and he's a wonderful leader, but he's not changing anything. And I think that's a, I think these elevations of consciousness that we have, they always come because they're evolutionary. You know, consciousness sounds like a woo woo thing, but it's really evolutionary psychology Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, evolution of the mind, the way the mind works. And it always comes with a call to, to, to advance or contribute to humanity. It, It moves from, you know, you have an awakening and it's about yourself and you're like, I don't like this job. I don't like the person I'm with. I don't like living here. You know, I don't like my habits. And so they recalibrate. And then it's we, which is like the family or if they're a business owner, everyone in the business starts to, you know, they change their business behavior. Um, and then, but then there's a point where you're not done. So the next step is everyone. And right. how are you, how are you serving humanity? How are you and Steve Jobs' words making a dent in the universe? And when you don't do it, the, one of the greatest curses of being a successful business person is um, having the means to pay for coping mechanisms because you're not doing what you're here to do. Um, you know, that that sense of like, I'm just going to keep doing the things and maybe this feeling will go away. Mm-hmm. And I just would say it doesn't. So that I always we always say that that kind of anxiety or 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 disconnectedness that is an invitation it's not that something stirring, that stirring that you feel it's inside to to, right it's something to listen to not suppress yeah oh so good so good i love this um you know i always say i it's like for me um you know god has been able to use me in everything that i've done in all my businesses to use my what i've learned the, the even the pitfalls the mistakes all of the things that i learned to help other people and for many, many years, I've been, you know, helping other people in my business in some way, shape or form. Even when I ran health clubs, I was helping people get healthier and lose weight and get in better shape and all those, all those things. So I did that for, for many years. Um, And I always say very much like you said, first, I did it for me first, I wanted to, you know, get in shape and and then I would, then I looked around and I said, but it changed so many things inside of me, not just the outside of who I was, but it changed the inside of who I was. And I thought, I want other people to feel this good. I want other moms to feel this good. And so then that started, right? And then that continued to ripple. And, and I do believe that when we have those awakenings, when we have those things that happen, um, with us, they are never going to just stop at us unless you, Unless you just, like you said, don't listen to that voice. Don't, don't take that step, Mm -hmm. but there's always more. There's always more. There's always another level or another layer that we need to step into. Um, And that's where the impact really comes from. Hey, it's Ann here, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have to ask you, would you like to level up and scale up your coaching or consulting business and go into that half a million dollars, million dollars or beyond, maybe even in the next year? Well, if it's a big yes for you, then I want to invite you to apply to my next free two-day virtual event. You do not want to miss this. These are the same strategies I use in my business and the same strategies I teach my high-paying clients so that they can have explosive growth and do it with a premium business. So go apply now because I have had people make money right out of my free workshops. All you need to do is go to Expert in You Workshop com apply to attend and i'll see you on the inside now back to the show right yeah you know um it, uh, michelangelo's alleged last words were i still have so much left to learn and yes. and there's a sense of 
like one of my goals is to end life with a zero balance in my regrets account, you know, like, and so, so part of that is the spiritual component of being an entrepreneur, you know, (laughs) being an entrepreneur is both a continuous traumatic event and a, also a spiritual practice in many ways. Uh, And continuous traumatic event. That's the first time I've heard that. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And so, that's why you know there is a sort of operationalized faith i don't mean faith related to like necessarily religious faith but certainly that can be the case but more of a sense of what rick rubin the music producer talks about or stephen pressfield who wrote the war of art and others have there is a a a place that we can access that the greeks called the muse a muse you know we use that term we we can access a sort of level of wisdom but it takes humility and quietness to do that. Um, and a lot of American entrepreneurs are kind of like the people, in the, the dudes in the gym that are all jacked up on their upper body, but they got chicken legs. It's mm-hmm. like American <laughs> entrepreneurs tend to, unless they're, unless they're entrepreneurs from traditionally marginalized groups, this is different for them. But um, the, they have, they have like a very overdeveloped left brain, very logical, linear, literal, but they're not using the other half of their brain, which is all based off of intuition and um, inner knowing and connecting to a higher source. And those are all there too. And, and we, most entrepreneurs don't access that part of themselves. That's so true. That is that is really true. It's so easy to stay in the hustle and grind. And like you said, you know, to just listen, to just be quiet, to just sit still and take that time. A lot of entrepreneurs don't even take time to think. And so they're they're just literally moving from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Um, I what are some ways, Justin, that you've been able to tap into that that might be helpful for other people that has really allowed you to figure out this calling for yourself and and so that you can even articulate it to other people or help other people articulate it and find it within themselves. Yeah, thank you. I there's a couple of things there. One is you know, going back to almost like stoicism and stoic philosophy of um, being very honest about what you can and can't control. Um, And it's a simple practice to just sit down and go, okay, these are all the things I can't control other than your mindset or reaction to them. Like you can't really control someone else without being an authoritarian. Um, Mm -hmm. You can't, uh, or being, you know, a tyrant. Um, And and so when you do that, it kind of then exposes the next thing is that um, we like to think that our values determine our behavior. It's a nice theory, but it, our, what determines our behavior are our priorities. So the, there's a stark difference between your priorities when you have been, when you practice some stillness or mindfulness or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we notice this now, let's say if we go off into nature. You know, you go on, you go on a you know camping trip, or even just go hiking in the woods for a couple hours. All the things you used to think were important were far less important, and that we should pay attention to that because what it shows is is that our behavior is determined by our priorities, as I said. And so, sitting down and going, "What is important to me? Like, what's truly important to me?" Um, and then the third one is, "What feelings are you avoiding?" We expend extraordinary amounts of energy avoiding feelings because we're afraid of them. It's kind of an American mm-hmm. trait over from being immig- you know, a nation of immigrants. And, you know, it's like, I'll feel it later or rub some dirt on it. Huh? You feel like men, that this is a big thing with men too. I know you specifically spoke um, about men, but they're almost taught in our culture. Yeah, I think it's more prevalent with men. The difference is men in power behave differently related to that than women in power. You know, the mm-hmm. um, the extraordinary amounts of data showing that women entrepreneurs and CEOs and world leaders are far more effective, far more nurturing, far more intuitive, far more innovative, far more risk-taking, you know, like, like, you know, ethical risk-taking. 
And I think it's because of that. It's like, if you're, a, I'll, I'll put it this way, whatever feeling you're trying to suppress, somebody else is using it to control you in one way or the other. So you're, you're basically just shooting yourself on the foot and being afraid of feelings is a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of strength. And right. People that are, that's why Brene Brown says vulnerability is the greatest act of courage. It's a similar thing of, I almost plead with male, with men that are leaders is to show people who you really are, show them your heart. And, and, you know, I think that there's a, a, there's a growing interest. And this is kind of what prompted us to start Massive is I read a statistic that about 12% of CEOs have a mindfulness practice, a regular mindfulness practice, meditation, prayer, silence, whatever. And it was uh, that was considered to be a huge leap over the last 20 years. Um, when you do that kind of work and you 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 are more mindful, you're more centered, you're more present in your body, you can't but help but see the world differently. And and but then it, it feels like you have to live almost like a split life. Like there's the work you, because you're the CEO and you should behave a certain way, mm, but there's the right. private you that meditates or prays. Um, and I think that's closing that gap and just showing people who you really are is its own. It's an important step in embodying mm -hmm. um, wholeness in the world. I agree. And you can't keep up if you're not authentic, if you're not, if you're not who you are everywhere, like what you see with me at home is the same thing you see in my business. And I know you're the same way. And I, I, I think that there has been uh, in our culture, a certain way that people should behave in leadership. And I'm so glad that those walls are finally being broken down and that things are shifting. And, and it's because of people like you and a lot of coaches and people that are, and, and great books that have been written and showing that, look, how do you really lead people when they, when you get them on your side, because they feel connected to you, they become part of your vision, part of your, your, how you're driven. And that's how you really lead people. And that's how you get the best results from people. But it's also how you are able to accomplish so much more and impact so many more people. Right. And I think that's why it's so important for business leaders of all sizes of companies and organizations to shift, like tr truly have a paradigm shift of, from thinking about your business as a machine and thinking about, it, thinking about it as an ecosystem or a complex adaptive system with that it's not a machine. And it, it is that is left over what I call smokestack thinking. It's left over from the industrial age and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the hierarchical power structures, and I could go on and on about that. But when you see it, and a lot of, some element of consciousness comes in here, into play here, when you see your business as a complex adaptive system, you're not really leading as much as you're leaning. You just sort of lean into an area. You lean on something, and you're like, what about this? And it's not the, you know, it's not George Patton out leading his troops across the, the right. Rhine in Germany. You know, it's it's much more being much more of a shepherd than a cattle driver. Um, yeah. And, so good. and I think, yeah, I think that that is why, you know, well, I'll put it this way. And every business is in the people business. And most just suck at it. And, <laughs> and, so, and that's yes. why the thing that makes a business, a complex adaptive system are the people, whether that's your customers, your employees, the marketplace, the community. Yeah. The machine is just the entity, part of the entity. It doesn't, you still got to maintain it, but the people, the people in the, your own humanity and the, your own dignity expressed through your culture and your customer experience, mm -hmm. that's the stuff that's gold and you can't right. fake it. There's no shortcuts. I mm -hmm. often say it's like making bourbon, not white claw, you know, like you have, it's, it's, yeah. got a, it's a process. Yeah, so good. You know, when I 
was coaching uh, small business owners for many, many years, I, I, you know, I would hear over and over again from these business owners, well, I can't get people, I can't get people, or they, they're going to go to my competitor for a dollar more an hour. And I, you know, I would have to get real with them. And I would say, look, th this is going to be hard to hear, but, you know, and I know, you know, this people don't leave, you know, businesses, they leave owners, they leave managers, they leave right their bosses. Right. And because they're just going to go somewhere else. And believe me, they're not doing it because they're getting paid a dollar more an hour. And right. so you have to hone those skills. It's like you said, you, you have to get people on your team, on your side. And the best way to do that is to be someone that people want to be with, that they, right. they want to work with, they want to move forward with, and, and they have the same values and the same, uh, you know, they, they feel this, again, this connection, Yes. Um, when you can keep employees for many, many years in your business because they don't want to leave you because you have, you know, you're, you're so great to work for. So these are all the kinds of things that you're really talking about, but you know, now we, now we've sort of come up with labels and names for it, but it is, it's so powerful when, when business owners, leaders realize this and make these changes. And, and like you said, the paradigm shifts, mm -hmm. so valuable. I love this. So you're helping them really pull this out, build their brand around it. And are you, and you're doing that. What size companies typically, Justin, are you working with? Who, who would be a good client for you? Yeah, I, there's, it's really not size of company, but I will say kind of like the, the likely to not work with us. <laughs> That's sometimes okay. easier to answer. That. A publicly traded company is a bureaucracy. And when you've got, and, and most of them are driven by the, you know, the kind of the root cause of a lot of suffering in of shareholder value of chasing shareholder value instead of actually living your values, which are mm -hmm. often in conflict with each other. They don't they don't they don't like us. So uh, we, they don't like what we have to say. And then they may be well intended, but startups like early stage startups, like they've got maybe bootstrap money, angel money, maybe early, early seed money the because they got outside money they that they are not all that they can't run their business the way that maybe their soul wants them to run the business they have to go out and spend the money and produce the results and um they're usually they're very often good people but they just don't have the freedom to do the kind of things that we're teaching organizations how to do um so we end up with with ceos and founders of kind of small to mid-sized businesses. Um, and then a lot of clients that are solo uh, professionals, they maybe had a corporate career. Uh, one that comes to mind very recently is longtime corporate career, um, decided to become a coach, but had a spiritual awakening and wants to use that. She wants to use her brand to, you know, to change things. And that's fairly common too, is of this. And, and a lot of our clients are, especially the solo clients are older, older, you know, they're 50 plus. Mm -hmm. um, right. And there's a sense of urgency of like, you know, I can't mess around. I got to go do this. Right. I don't have and all day. I don't have all day. <laughs> right. And there's some freedom. The kids are grown and out of the house, you know, um, there's um, either they're, they don't have a partner or their partner's supportive of what they're doing. Um, and they have, there's a lot of liberty there to, to do things. And mm -hmm. the common denominator across all of our clients, it, the singular most important trait is courage. The courage to go inward, the courage to say the truth about who you are and what you do and why you do it. The courage to be different is we can't give you that. We can give you a killer strategy and we can give you great coaching on your mindset, your brand strategy, but we cannot give you courage. Um, and then the other little kind of interesting thing is we have a requirement that um, every client has to be in some form of active therapy or have a, a some some sort of active therapy. Mm. And because mm. without that kind of deep work, we can't coach what we say. We can't coach the hologram. We can't coach the person that you had to pretend to be to get here. We got to coach you. We're not therapists. So mm -hmm. you've got to go find out who you are. And it doesn't always have to be therapy. It could be a spiritual practice, you know, a, a faith practice, something like that. But there has to be this 
existing practice of inner work because it all starts inward, all starts inward. And if the first time you think about going inward is when you come to us, we're going to, we're going to wreck you. We're going to blow, we're going to, we're going to scramble your brain. You won't ever be the same. So having some of that in place first is really important for our process. Very good. I love this. So I know I could, we could talk forever, but um, Justin, I know you're, I want to value your time. How can people get a hold of you and connect with you? I, you're on LinkedIn. Are you on Facebook as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm very findable. I got a unique enough name, Justin Foster, that you can find me anywhere. Um, I have kind of different, um, I use social media kind of differently than, uh, than most people. So like on Instagram, for example, I do a lot of poetry um, and sharing of like philosophical thoughts. LinkedIn is, um, I'd be more provocative on LinkedIn and then, you know, Facebook. And that's that's pretty much it. You can find me there. You can go to our website, massivechange.co. Um, but the best thing to do is just find me on whatever medium you're on, whatever platform you're on and message me and say that you heard me on Ann's show and I'll talk to anybody. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I love what you're doing in the world. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much for being here. It was such an honor to interview you and have you on. And I just appreciate you so much. I appreciate you too, Anne. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. All right, everyone. Again, you heard another expert guest. Go connect with Justin. Also, we'll put all of his links in the show notes so you can get a hold of him in, in multiple ways. And until next week, God bless you. Go rock your business. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye. I love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You Podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are.